medical procedure and operation, the body is freaked out. Body doesn't know it just had an operation. It thinks it's being eaten. So it clots the blood to protect itself. Clotting the blood protects, its, protects the body from hemorrhaging, from bleeding to death. It's a manifestation of adrenal activation. Relax the body and blood flow will stabilize. Relax the body and the blood will thin. Oxygen is one of the all-time greatest non-toxic blood thinners there is. When was the last time you got a prescription for oxygen? When was the last time you got a prescription for deep breathing? If you had blood clotting. If you are on a blood thinner, and you start practicing your deep breathing techniques, you're gonna be able to wean yourself off that blood thinner or at least lower your dose. And blood, thinner, blood thinning drugs are incredibly toxic. Long-term adrenal stimulation is behind the epidemic of coagulation, blood clotting, that we are dealing with. It's behind the billions and billions of dollars that we spend through taxes, through insurance, through Obamacare, and out of pocket for Plavix and Pradaxa and Xarelto and all of these other biologics and high-tech blood thinning drugs that have made drug companies and drug company executives incredibly wealthy. If that sounds evil and anti-humanity, it is. If you're thinking how devious and twisted drug company CEOs and drug companies are and make millions of dollars on our misery, millions, millions of dollars in bonuses, tens of millions of dollars a year, that's what these CEOs are making, tens of millions of dollars a year, a year in bonuses and salaries because human beings are so freaked out by the foods we're eating and the culture we're living in that our adrenal glands are clotting our blood so significantly we got to be drugged out, we got to be pharmaceuticalized. If you're thinking that it's devious, if you're thinking it's twisted, if you're thinking it's anti-humanity, it is. One of the most obvious examples of hyperadrenal activity are the unpleasant symptoms of menopause. Hot flashes, anxiety, insomnia, hypertension, weight issues, emotional issues. All of these, these are like a checklist of adrenal activation. If you want to know what it's like to have hyper, what uh, the symptoms of adrenal activation or excessive adrenal activation are, just think of menopausal symptoms. That's exactly a, a checklist, one by one, of adrenal activation. So what does that tell you? Well, if you're going through menopause, you're going through the transition, and you're dealing with insomnia, you're dealing with high blood pressure, you're dealing with blood sugar problems, relax the body. I mean, this should be such good news. Get a massage. A massage is like medicine. A massage is the best medicine. If I was president, I wouldn't have national health care. I'd have national massage insurance where every American gets a massage once a week or twice a week. We'd have a lot of happy massage therapists and a lot of happy citizens. If you're going through the menopausal change, relax the body. Focus on adrenal health. Now, there's lots of nutrients you can use for adrenal health issues. I'll tell you what those are here. Probably get to those tomorrow and the next day. Infertility, by the way, that's another example of adrenal stress. As many couples know, it can be difficult to conceive a baby. According to the National Infertility Association, yet another health association, almost 12% of women have received infertility services in their lifetime. One in eight couples have trouble getting pregnant. Nearly... 12% of women between the ages of 15 and 44 have impaired, fertility, infer, have impaired fertility. And once again, you're talking about the adrenal glands. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't go away. From the journal Fertility and Sterility, a publication of the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, women who participate in a mind-body program for stress reduction while undergoing, undergoing fertility therapy, fertility treatment, have a significantly higher pregnancy rate than those who don't. 52% versus 20%. Quote, the intersection of stress and fertility is a controversial one, but we do know that stress can reduce the probability of conception, unquote, said Principal Investigator Alice Domar, PhD, OBGYN. Where have you heard that before? You don't need a doctor to tell you this. You don't need me to tell you this. It's just common sense. When the body is under stress, it's not going to make a baby because the body is not stupid. Human beings are stupid. We'll make a baby, or we'll try to make a baby, no matter what our conditions are, no matter what our financial conditions, our mental conditions, our home life is. But the body, body's not stupid. Body's way smarter than we are, 
And if there is some kind of burden, emotional, psychological, physiological burden, it ain't making a baby. Now, you can force it to make a baby with drugs and IVF, uh, in vitro fertility, in vitro fertilization, etc. But the body doesn't want to make a baby. It's going to be a lot tougher. Anyway, we'll continue talking about the adrenal connection to infertility, the adrenal connection to hypercoagulation, blood clotting, the adrenal connection to skin issues and melasma and hyperpigmentation tomorrow. And then we'll talk about nutritional strategies, wonderful nutrients that you can use internally as well as topically to help reduce hyperpigmentation, keep your skin beautiful, young, and youthful looking. And of course, if you want topical, topical strategies or topical products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our vitamin C and vitamin A retinol products. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We got a full board of calls here. Let's go to Frank in PA. Thanks for holding on for 40 minutes there, my friend. What's going on? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Ben, if I may call you Ben. Um, yes. I was, uh, uh, I had to go to the emergency room about a month ago. We were on vacation in Scotland. I, uh, shortness of breath. I couldn't walk but a few feet. I could put a stand of it. And I was given a diuretic, and after an hour, about an hour after I was given a diuretic, uh, I started to feel much better. And over the five weeks since then, I've had no uh, symptoms. However, I was diagnosed several times now with aortic valve stenosis. Okay. And I've been told by five different cardiologists, all allopathic, of course, conventional medicine, that I must have surgery and very soon. Okay. Now, well, here's, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that there's a formulation, yes. you know, an integrity yes. formulation. But my concern, before you answer me, is I, I really, they told me, it's a, is there any way of, of speaking to someone who's had experience with a, a protocol and how fast it might work? Com I'm just going to give you common sense, Frank. I'm, I, I'm not going to, all I'm going to tell you is the logic of how this works, and I'm going to let you come up with your own answers once you hear the logic of how everything works, okay? That's how I like to operate on the bright side. I got a call yesterday from a gal, and she got a little upset with me because I told her, I don't want to just give you a recipe because you're smart. You're, a, you know, Frank, you're not a dummy. You, I don't believe human beings are dummies. I believe that once I tell you how this whole thing works, you can take care of the protocol yourself. All right, I'll give you some suggestions, and I'll help you out. I'll guide you through the process. But once you understand the logic, you'll see how simple it is. If you can understand your plumbing at home, you can understand your body. The body is a hemodynamic system. It's based on fluid dynamics, hemodynamics in the body, fluid dynamics in physics. It's the movement of fluid, or hemo means blood, the movement of blood or the movement of fluid. That's what everything is in the body. It's all plumbing. And if you can understand your sink and your toilet, you can understand your body. Uh, aortic valve stenosis is when the, the, uh, the vessels, the circulation to the heart is cut off. Stenosis means a narrowing. It's a fancy way, word for narrowing. Uh, aortic valve stenosis means there's a narrowing of the, blood, of, of the circulatory system that goes into the heart, and the heart is running out of oxygen. Does that make sense so far? Yes, I've actually researched. Well, let me finish, bro. Let me finish just a little bit, okay? Let me just finish. So what we want to do is we want to oxygenate the heart. That's your strategy. And that means improving the circulation plumbing, the valve plumbing. you got a plumbing problem. The blood's not flowing to the heart correctly, and your heart is suffocating. Are you with me? That's what the shortness of breath is, by the way. Are you with me? Right, so they gave you a diuretic because they probably suspected there was some kind of blood pressure issue, and there very well could be. But your problem, first and foremost, is oxygen. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. The last thing you ever want to do is have a surgical procedure, especially in your heart, unless you have a major emergency and you're not in that condition yet. So first thing you got to do right away, today, now, as soon as you hang up the phone, start slow, deep breathing practices. Now, are you hypertensive? You have high blood pressure? Do you know? Yes. Okay. What is being so, controlled by a... Uh, no, no, I just want to know. I want to okay. follow, follow along with me here, okay? Do you have a blood pressure cuff? Uh, no. Get one. Everybody should get one if they're dealing with any kind of health challenge because it allows you to, to do biofeedback, to monitor yourself. This is the, the neat thing about a blood pressure cuff. I have well, I don't have hypertension, but I always take my blood pressure just to kind of keep, I want to know how my behaviors and how my activities are affecting my blood pressure. It's just diagnostic. So what you do is get a blood pressure cuff. You can get one off, off Amazon. Get one called the Omron 10, I think, O-M-R-O-N. It's real easy to use. 
You just put the cuff on and press a button and it does, it, it, it's, it kind of does the thing where it squeezes your arm and then it relaxes and then it re gives you a blood pressure reading. You can get a blood pressure reading in three minutes at home. It'll cost you 60 or 70 bucks for the machine. It's a great, great value. Take your blood pressure and then slow deep breathe and then practice slow deep breathing for three minutes and then take your blood pressure again and guaranteed you'll see your blood pressure drop. That's the first thing you need to do. Now, then after we, and you want to do that right away and you want to do it throughout the day and you especially want to do it at least once or twice a day. But throughout the day is a great way to do it when you're in rush hour, when you're waiting in line at the bank. And when I say slow deep breathing, I mean 15 seconds in through the nose, 15 seconds out through the nose. And you probably can't do it that long, but you want to work your way up to it. That's a, that comes out to a full breath. Uh, every 30 seconds, two breaths, two breaths a minute. All right, that's first and foremost. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to want to start using nutrients and dietary strategies that keep that valve open, that keep the, the blood supply moving to the heart, and also keep the blood supply and the circulatory circulation moving throughout the entire body. There's a lot of nutrients to do to use, and I'll tell you a few in a second. But first and foremost, recognize that sugar and insulin are the major enemies, the major physical enemies uh, to the circulatory system. So reducing your sugar is very important and also using sugar metabolizing nutrients is very important. That means bread and pasta and, and potatoes and desserts and fruit juice and soda pop and I'm sure you know all the foods I'm talking about here. And by the way, there's a good chance you're, you're dealing with diabetes or, or, or some kind of dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, and that will correct that. And then you're also going to want to use nutrients that help stabilize the blood sugar. And interestingly, and this will make perfect sense to you based on everything I just said, the nutrients that help you with your blood sugar are also nutrients that help you with your circulatory system. So you take care of two, uh, you kill two birds with one stone. You'll stabilize your blood sugar and you'll improve circulation. The B vitamins, especially niacin. I would be using time to release niacin if I were you, Frank. Maybe 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Make sure you're on the healthy start pack. That'll give you your 90, basic 90 essential nutrients. Make sure you're using magnesium. Now, if you'll get some in the Beyond Osteo FX, but I would be taking a little extra magnesium, around 2,000 milligrams a day of magnesium. Again, it's good for sugar, and it's also good for the circulatory system. Don't forget vitamin C. It's unbelievably important for, circula for the circulatory system because it's water-soluble. We pee it out. Most people are deficient. 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams minimum of vitamin C. You also want to make sure you're using your electrolytes in addition to magnesium, potassium, sodium, calcium. These are electrolytes electrical nutrients that are also important for the circulatory system and the blood sugar system. Hang on, there's a couple more things, Frank, I'm going to tell you about. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Okay, we're back on the bright side talking to Frank in PA. Frank, you there, my friend? Aortic valve yep. stenosis. Okay, you got a little narrowing of the of the uh, aortic valve and blood is not getting to the heart it's causing problem with oxygenation thus the shortness of breath so what you got to do is you got to improve oxygenation and circulation it's a plumbing you're having a plumbing problem does that make sense yes it does okay so deep breathing as soon as you hang up the phone 15 seconds in 15 seconds out do it as much as you can at least three minutes that'll give you two breaths a minute so you're looking at six breaths over the course of three minutes, and if you could do that three or four times a day, you'll immediately notice an improvement in oxygenation. Uh, secondly, nutritional supplements. We talked about niacin, the B-complex. Vitamin C is very important. Keeping your sugar down, stabilizing your sugar. These nutrients will also help you stabilize your sugar, changing the way you eat, reducing sugar intake, etc. Electrolytes are also important. Magnesium, potassium, calcium, sodium. Use your healthy start pack. That's also going to be important for you. If you have any digestive issues, which you probably do, those need to be corrected as well. A couple of miscellaneous nutrients for the uh, circulatory system are zinc. I'm sorry, uh, zinc is also important, but uh, what I was going to say is coenzyme Q10 and vitamin E, which are very, uh, which are similar. They're like cousins. Vitamin E, 400 IU a day, and then coenzyme Q10, oil soluble, not the powder stuff, but the oil soluble stuff. 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Last but not least, get yourself a rebounder, which is a mini trampoline. Get it off the internet for 60 bucks or so, or you can get it at a sporting goods store, and um, and practice and jump jump in the morning and jump at night. Just do maybe a minute or two minutes of, of jumping. That will improve your circulatory system and will also improve lymphatic circulation if you have any toxins that are getting into the system, clogging things up. Which is and there's a good chance that that's a problem as well.
well. And then if you, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of an inversion machine. We talked about these inversion devices a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Inversion can also sometimes help with circulation. So you're, you have a plumbing problem. You got to improve the circulation. Use nutrition, dietary strategies, especially sugar. And then also uh, don't forget about the absolutely 